Hi, everyone, and welcome to our call. We'll get started really shortly. We're just waiting to let a few more people in before we start the agenda. Before we get started, it's always fun to um, introduce our different panelists. So um, let's start at the top. Maya, do you want to um, say hello? Maya Buchanan. Yes, hello. <laughs> this is Maya Buchanan. Where are you at, located and where do you vote? I'm in DA UK and I vote in New Mexico. Oh, fantastic. I'm, I'm Julia Bryan, by the way. I'm the, the global chair of Democrats Broad and I'm based in Prague, but I vote in North Carolina. Edie, what about you? Yeah, I live in Finland and I vote in Pennsylvania. Ooh, swing state. Yeah, important That's one. Fantastic. Laura? Uh, yes, I'm Laura Mosedale. I live in London, but I vote in Minnesota in a swing district in, wow. in North Minnesota. Fantastic. Inga? Hi, I'm based in London and uh, very boring. <laughs> I'm like the exciting people. I vote in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, you know, I always say California voters are great for voter protection. And uh, if you vote anywhere in the United States this year, uh, we can't spare votes. So it's important that everybody votes. <laughs> Mary, go ahead. Hi, I'm Mary. I uh, am in the Netherlands and I vote also in Pennsylvania. Ooh, my gosh, we are full of swing states. Maya. Oh, you, Maya's already gone. Midge. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mitch Purcell. I live in Gloucestershire, England, and I vote in Oregon. Ooh, thank you so much. All right, guys, it looks like we've gotten a full list of participants. We've just been introducing ourselves so you didn't have to join to silence and stern faces. And we are going to get started with our program. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Julia Bryan. I'm the Global Chair of Democrats Abroad, and we're really happy that you could join us today for this DA Voter Protection Zoom workshop. Um, I'm joined by Inga Kiemtru, who you've heard from, who's the chair of DA UK, Maya Buchanan, who's the chair of our DA Voter Protection Global Team, Laura Mosdale, who's the co-chair of DA UK Voter Registration, and then Edie Furness and Mary Maheen, who are both voter protection volunteers. We also have Mitch Purcell, who's going to give us a, a brief overview of the work that she's doing a little bit further down the agenda. Before we get started, I just wanted to say that we really appreciate you joining us today and we really appreciate your interest in voter protection. It's incredibly important this year because there's gonna be so much voter suppression. We're already seeing it coming out of the states and we just know we are gonna to have to be focused and buckled down to do the work that uh, is needed to make sure your ballots count. Um, one thing I just wanna make sure about is that everyone, uh, like let's be all respectful of each other. The chat is open. Um, to, you can chat with the panelists and the Q&A is open too, so you can use the Q&A for questions. But um, I want to make a note that any troll-like behavior will lead to immediate removal. Please be polite. I'm sure we all will be. We're all here for a really good reason. Um, we're also going to be working on a little, it's an activism workshop, so we're going to be doing some hands-on uh, work as well. We'll be making calls and we'll be tweeting to register our concerns about voting from overseas. Um, we're also going to be uh, talking about our letter of concern campaign, which is focused on reaching out to our governors in democratically run states who require vote by mail. So we're going to be getting down um, to that further, further down the car. But to start off everything, we wanted to hear from Midge Purcell, who works on voting rights issues in DA UK and who lives in, lives in um, I'm probably going to say this wrong, Gloucestershire. Midge is a DA UK Black Caucus and PNR member. She was formerly Director of Advocacy and Public Policy at the Urban League in Portland and is a founding member of Oregon Voice, which is organized to increase voter engagement and political power in communities of color. Midge also worked with Common Cause to ensure fair redistricting outcomes for black communities and as a grassroots lobbyist in the Oregon legislature. She's gonna say a few words about voter suppression and advocacy work, and we're really, really delighted that she was able to join us today. Midge? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, I, I just want to give an overview of the, the scope of voter suppression. Um, the pros as, as Julia said, the prospect of um, voter suppression in the November elections is really high by states who either willfully or through incompetence remain unprepared to ensure that every registered voter has the ability to vote safely and conveniently and be confident that their vote will count. 
Um, what we saw during the primaries was widespread inability amongst many states to deal with the consequences of COVID-19, in particular, the surge in mail-in ballot requests. In Georgia's primary, for example, 40,000 to 50,000 voters who requested ballots never received them. Many of those people then showed up um, uh, at the polling stations and waited in long lines for over three to four hours. And some of them um, gave up and lost their right to vote. It's actually estimated that voting should take no longer than 30 minutes. Black and Hispanic voters um, on average wait 45% longer than that. So many analysts are predicting that the scale and danger of voter suppression this year is more prevalent than it's been for half a century. It's actually a perfect storm. Along with the fear and disruption caused by COVID-19, we are still hugely affected by the loss of voter protections as a result of the Supreme Court ruling in Shelby versus Holder in 2013, which unleashed a wave of voter suppression measures that are now entrenched primarily in Republican-led states. Um, for example, just 24 hours after Shelby versus Holder, 34 states introduced photo ID laws, with um, at least seven of them imposing strict requirements for government issued IDs that they knew large numbers of people, in particular communities, communities of color, students, etc., could not meet. So there's no doubt that the voters that that voter suppression uh, became the Republican reelection strategy. There are also a wave of over 1,000 poll closures, mainly in Black and Latino communities, and more than 16 million U.S. voters were purged from the electoral rolls between 2014 and 2016. Um, we mentioned Florida er earlier. Um, there was a recent Supreme Court ruling that means nearly 1 million Floridians will be unable to vote in the 2020 elections um, because of unpaid court debts, which is effectively imposing a poll tax. Um, so this decision in a battleground state will cause chaos with voter registration efforts, cause uncertainty among huge numbers of would-be voters, and even open them up to prosecution for casting a ballot. Um, this is intimidation. And intimidation is another voter suppression tactic. Um, so uh, states are also reporting large numbers of rejected ballots. Um, more than 5% were not counted in the Virginia June primary because they arrived too late. More than 1% of the ballots in Pennsylvania and Nevada were also not counted for the same reason. So voting rights advocates are calling for more funding for states, county election boards, and the postal service itself, um, because there are well-founded fears that there are deliberate attempts to slow down postal delivery of ballots. Um, and there's good reason for that fear, um, because during the primary, there, um, many ballots just languished undelivered um, past deadlines. So we have to build momentum. I think that's part of what this conversation is about. We have to build momentum among our members to make sure that they vote early and they make sure that their vote is counted. We need governors and secretaries of states to ensure that Americans have um, fair polling place resources, that there's adequate training amongst poll workers, and there are resources to deal with the large volumes of mail-in ballots that we expect. Um, also, that those of us who live abroad can um, utilize expanded options for returning ballots via email. Um, we must always remember that our vote is our right, and we can't concede our power away. Voting rights is the conduit through which all other change is made possible. You can't tackle criminal justice, um, justice reform, you can't tackle climate change, economic insecurity, racial injustice without the full power of our vote. 
John Lewis and Reverend C.T. Vivian's passing reminds us of the shoulders that we stand on to ensure that every American has the right to vote. And it's our responsibility to guarantee those rights. We stand on the shoulders of those who are beaten on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, of the women before, him, before them um, who made substantial sacrifices to gain the right to vote. So when we call our members, we must urge them not to relinquish that right easily and not to let that right be taken away. We have to arm ourselves with information and the requirements of our state. And we, we have great tools, which people will talk about shortly. Um, so we have to make sure that we follow up to make sure our voices are heard. We know that there's a lot at stake. Thank you. Thank you, Medj. You are always so insp inspirational when you um, join us and we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And Thank you, Midge. I think that's uh, what Midge has um, given to us is a great overview of voter protection history and some of the issues that we need to be aware of this year. And as she said, we're now gonna dive into some of those, uh, what we're doing right now. So um, Maya, do you wanna start by telling us about the DA voter protection team and what we're up to? Maya? And meet myself? Oh, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just give a bit of an overview of our voter protection efforts um, for 2020 and what we're working on in detail, some of the ways that we can you can get involved. Um, I think Edie is sharing my screen or sharing your screen for the slides. Um, if you can just go through to um, Let's see, if you go through to two and three, just really briefly, um, we have, um, so I have some slides here, which I'll get up. This slide deck goes through a lot of what we're covering today, but it's also acts as a standalone resource for anyone who wants to know what we're doing, info about our campaigns, messages to share with our members, volunteering, and it'll be sent to participants after the call and housed on the wiki. So I won't be going through every bit of this today, but I really urge you to, um, to use this as a resource. Um, if we go to slide four, if you, um, let's see, Edie, can you go to slide four? Let's see. Great. Um, Is that the right one? Sorry, I don't see the numbers, so you can just tell oh, me right. go forwards so or backwards. The next one, the next one, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so essentially we're working um, to make it easier for Americans overseas to vote in US elections and to help make sure that our votes are counted because registering um, and requesting a ballot is only the first step in voting a ballot. Um, and at the moment, it can be even more complicated um, to make sure our votes are counted because of the pandemic and the confusion and misinformation around that and legitimate voter suppression as Midge just so eloquently um, spelled out for us um, and the work um, roughly falls into these three areas uh, for voters abroad um, it's information and outreach to all of our members um, working to expand email and web portal ballot returns which is a focus of, of our actions today um, with the uh, letter of concern campaign and working on legal and voter protection issues with, with state party and voter protection teams um, we're focusing on states returning ballots by mail, countries without international postal service, battleground states, members who have had their ballots rejected or have been purged from the voter rolls during the primaries. Um, you can go to slide five, the next one. Yeah. And so these are our current campaigns that we're working on um, to do those things. Um, expanding unrestricted ballot return options, um, keeping our members aware of all the changing issues. Um, that's in fact part, a huge part of our job is just anticipating what might happen and trying to get ahead of it and, and be responsive to those, um, those changing circumstances. Um, and helping to protect the USPS. Um, you know, the Postal Service is absolutely critical for all you know, voters, um, you know, in the States or here, um, and critical generally, um, but particularly now in this moment, um, and advocating for vote by mail, 
um, within the states and safe early in-person voting for Americans living at home. So those are the campaigns that we're working on. Um, and so my role in all of this as voter protection chair is to liaise closely with Julia and the Get Up Vote teams, working to resolve voter, individual voter issues, work to help develop voter protection campaigns and strategy, strategy to increase member awareness on voting issues, to help organize activism, to elevate our campaign's successes, um, sharing DNC and state party voter protection updates via Julia to membership and vice versa, and to coordinate volunteer efforts. Um, so that's a little bit about what I'm doing. But Julia, do you want to say a bit about what you're doing with the DNC and state party protection teams? Absolutely. Um, one thing that's really exciting about uh, what's happening this year is that, yes, there is a lot of voter suppression out there, but we are not taking it lightly. The DNC has a very robust voter protection team right now. And there's also every, almost every state party um, of any size also has voter protection teams, including us. And our, our team is, is really valiant. We're uh, um, volunteers, but um, I, some of the work that we do is just, uh, it, it's really, it digs down and very fantastic. Sometimes our other state parties are kind of jealous about, about our volunteers. I have to tell you, it's kind of funny. But let me just tell you a bit about the DNC voter protection work that they're doing. They have a, a, um, a tool that actually gathers together all the voter uh, purge lists, because as you probably are aware, a lot of states are purging um, voters from their files uh, with any chance they can get. And uh, what, what the DNC has done is they've put together all of these lists into a big database. So you can, you can go and you can say, okay, is, uh, are these groups of people purged? And then you can get in touch with them and let them know, yes, I'm so sorry, you're, you've been removed from the database. As a registered voter, you need to re-register re again. They also identify problem trends to so their voter help desk and they have a voter um, help desk that's run every day and they're very good about sending us information about um, any problems they're hearing from uh, when Americans ab abroad get in touch with them. We also work with them from our side. We get in touch and say, here's our issue. How would you recommend solving it? Who should we reach out to? And they are great about um, finding legislative uh, partners, finding state partners, and just brainstorming solutions. Let me give you some examples of uh, what we're working on right now with state parties as an ex um, just to give you some um, indication of what, there's just this wide variety of issues that come up. But for example, um, in Virginia and also Washington State, both uh, of these states, we're hearing from voters right now that they're not able to access their uh, election websites from abroad. So we're getting in touch with Washington State. I have a call with them tonight, in fact, to go over um, some of these issues and say, look, have them go back to the state and say, uh, just because someone's coming from abroad, that doesn't mean they're trying to spam you. They're all they're trying to do is get their voter information. Same thing with Virginia. So uh, one, just a side note, um, you know, when you go and check your registration status, and I hope you're going to do that either t tonight or tomorrow, make sure if your if the site doesn't work, it's not because it's probably not because of your internet. It's probably because the site has been blocked from where you live. Make sure you get in touch with us <clears throat> and let us know about it because we can reach out to these states and say, hey, look, great that you are worried about this, about spamming and um, people co coming from abroad, but you have voters from abroad who need that information and they just need to hear it. And then they will um, hopefully uh, mitigate that problem. Another great example of what we're doing with states in Florida. If you're a Florida voter, please pay attention to this announcement. Um, you are able to fax your ballot back this year you can't email it, but you can fax it. Now, one thing we know about fax, fax back ballots, sometimes the local election offices in Florida in 2018, their fax machines would be turned off. And when someone faxed back their ballot, it wouldn't get through. Or they'd run out of paper. Or they'd run out of ink. So we reached out to the Florida Democratic Party and the voter protection team. And we were like, hey, look, guys, we have a great idea for your volunteers. Please have fax watchers working with these local election offices, making sure those faxes, fax machines are working and they have all the supplies they need. This is a perfect on the ground concrete solution that's gonna hopefully help thousands of voters. Um, and you know, Florida is one of the top states for getting ballots for ballot, ballot returns in the country from abroad. So we really are focused on it. And we're very excited that Florida is um, jumping on, on board with us. 
So again, um, we're really happy to, that we have all these great states and to work with all these great voter protection teams to work with. And if you are interested in volunteering to work with ours, we'd, we'd love to have you. Back to you, Maya. Well, thank you, Julia. Um, I mean, it's great to hear that um, so many voter protection teams have really sprung into action. So um, that is a change from last time, for sure. Um, so um, just, I'm not gonna go through all the projects that we've got because of time, but um, the few, the, there are a couple that we've just launched rec recently that I would like to share with you um, and get um, volunteer help and the, the leadership of country committees can help in this as well. Um, so Edie, if you could share slide six and that is, um, yes, that's it, thank you. Um, so this is just the, the first project on here, which is reviewing state lists to make sure that all, um, all um, information is accessible to all countries. That speaks to what jo Julia was just saying, where um, different countries get blocked for various reasons. So um, we have, so reviewing state lists involves helping to check resources at, at the bottom of the state pages and vote from a broad, vote from a broad web, website. Um, not all countries, again, are able to access the same information because of different state firewall restrictions. Um, and sometimes links break. We need to check this information from different country locations to make sure that the website is a reliable resource for everyone, no matter where they're viewing it from. And we've recently made a call for volunteers in each country committee to come and help in this work. So please let us know if you're interested. We need one volunteer per country committee to come and help in this work. And it's probably about half an hour, 40 minutes um, work every couple of weeks um, researching. And so that would be really great. Um, and then if you could, um, let's see, go to the next, um, go to, to um, slide nine. I mean, you can skim through. Actually, if you just skim through these, don't instead of don't, um, yeah. So I'm not gonna, Julia's touched on this. The purges, reviews, rejected primary voters, those are absolutely critical. Um, Julia's just mentioned those and we really would love volunteers to come and help with that and um, reviewing data and then helping to call members and let them know they've been purged or, and, and help, you know, assist in getting people, um, getting their situation sorted or that they've had their uh, ballot rejected for some reason. Um, so um, if we skip three to slide 10. We'll slip through to, um, to slide nine. Okay, so um, we've just skipped through uh, the letter of concern campaign and I'm gonna come back to that. So that's why it didn't stop there, but that's a main focus on what we're doing here. So the post-election efforts are going to be huge because once the election is over, there'll be an all hands on deck effort to um, make sure that, you know, well, we might need to cure ballots. Um, Julia can talk a little bit about what that is um, afterwards. Um, so our role in this would be to um, help, help states um, that have this uh, requirement contact voters from these states, alert them to the, of this additional step that maybe they weren't expecting and assist in the process to collect feedback for further voter protection work in the event that we need to um, that there are court cases and affidavits need to be found. Um, so that's one thing, but um, that is gonna be a big effort and all hands on deck. So we'll need a big team for that. Um, so um, do you want to, well, actually go to the key messages, which is the next slide. Um, this and all of our projects, one of the main things that we're doing is just trying to share as much information as possible with our membership and we encourage the leadership of country committees to do the same. This is a post that is going to be a Facebook post which is just giving people helpful tips and encouraging them to have a voting plan, not to wait to the minute they are concerned about something, contacting us so that we can help resolve the issues. Um, 
tips about contacting your local elections officials um, and recording your experience so that you have something to show us if a court case or anything needs to be pursued. So that's one, that's, that's something that is really key that we're doing and it's a kind of multi-pronged um, effort. Um, so that's, yeah, so that's some of what we're doing. And um, Laura, do you want to have, um, do you want to say, um, say something about what um, Get Out the Vote activities are going on? Sure, I'd be delighted to. Um, and Inga, I wonder if you can show the first slide um, that we had uh, just about our Get Out the Vote and voter registration activities in the UK. Um, Give me a second. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Does that mean that Edie needs to stop, sh stop sharing her screen? Yeah. No, I should be able to do both. Just my oh. computer's being a little bit slow. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, great. So thanks very much. And it's so exciting to be um, working with so many great people and Democrats abroad. It's really been a thrill this year. So these are the key activities for Get Out the Vote um, in, in the UK. Uh, we've been very busy since January and even before. Um, and a lot of these are activities that obviously you can get involved in no matter where you are in Democrats abroad, whatever um, country you're in. Um, the phone banking is really important and I, I am a great evangelist of it. It's a wonderful way that any member of Democrats abroad can call other members of Democrats abroad around the world and give them some of the key messages that Maya just highlighted to make sure that they are set to vote this year. Um, the other thing that we're doing that this, uh, uh, there was a postcard project in uh, DA Germany that first got us inspired. Um, we're doing a lot of postcarding to our members um, in the UK, uh, it, it, focusing on uh, members who vote in key states. And that's true of some of our phone banking campaigns too. They've been quite targeted this year. Um, to, to make sure we're really, uh, we have limited time, limited resources, and we want to reach out to uh, those voters by phone or by postcard um, to be absolutely sure the voters in those battleground states are set to vote. Because we haven't done uh, as many, well, we, we've been unable to do in-person voter registration drives, we are now doing virtual voter registration drives, and we're working on setting those up at clubs and companies and alumni associations wherever American citizens can be found to make sure that we can offer sort of bespoke voter registration um, uh, opportunities. Uh, we can let people, um, you know, find out uh, if they have any questions about, about voting from abroad. We've also do Sunday drop-in sessions now that we're trying to publicize and we'd love the help of people from other country committees to make all your members aware and people outside your networks aware that we have these drop-in um, Q&A sessions. So if you have any questions at all about uh, absentee uh, voting and voting from abroad, you can just drop right in. Um, this year we have uh, a sort of a global comms team um, really promoting vote from abroad as a, as a nonpartisan brand. So we can reach out beyond, again, our, our DA networks, make sure that people know um, we can share these links that are about vote from abroad because it is a nonpartisan website. Anybody can use it. Um, and uh, as you can see below, if there's one thing everybody on the call could do the minute they get off, apart from checking their own voter registration status, is to go on to one or all of these, um, these vote from abroad uh, social, social media platforms. There's the Twitter is called VFA Global. On Facebook, it's vote from abroad on Instagram, it's vote from abroad and students.votefromabroad. Um, and this is also part of our voting champion program, which has been devised uh, mostly by my co-chairs, um, Linda Addison and Elizabeth Kelly as uh, a relational organizing toolkit. And Inga, could we see the next slide, please? Uh, Inga, is she there? You should the vote. Yep, here it is. The voting champion program. Thanks a lot. And this is really pretty simple, but it's it's um, its simplicity is its beauty. We really hope that as many people as possible will sign up for this. It just involves taking a pledge, 
um, and completing three quick wins. The pledge is to reach out to all your overseas um, citizen friends and make sure they know about requesting their absentee ballot and make sure they know about votefromabroad.org is a great sort of one-stop shop and resource for all voting information. So, um, so you take the pledge, you make sure that you've applied for your ballot yourself from votefromabroad.org. You follow these three social media um, platforms or whichever ones you might use and make sure to share and like the posts. And then you can make votefromabroad.org visible in all your communications. So we have, um, uh, you, you can use as your email signature, uh, you know, at the bottom, you can say, are you, are you abroad? Have you gone to votefromabroad.org this year to request your absentee ballot? Um, this is kind of our, our, our virtual billboards. Um, th this is how we get the message across, especially at a time when we can't really socialize the way we would normally. And there's a link at the bottom for the toolkit. Um, so please feel free to copy this, share this, go to it. Um, and there's an email if you have any questions, comms at votefromabroad.org. So um, again, we hope that uh, there's, there's really easy ways uh, to get involved, help promote and spread the message and really get the word out in a way we haven't been able to before. So um, do we wanna go back to uh, Julia now before we start taking our actions? Great, so I just wanna say thank you. And again, if you are interested in volunteering, one of the very first things that you can do is to uh, get started by sharing. Um, it's just, it's a really super way of reaching beyond um, who we know to people that you know and making sure they are ready to vote this, uh, this year. So, Thank you so much, Laura, and thank you, Maya, for all these, these wonderful overviews and presentations. And now we're about to get into the actions. Um, but I just want to say a few words about why uh, making calls, and uh, you know, we are about to, to practice making calls, but why making calls can be so effective and also why sending emails can be so effective. It's because your uh, elected officials care about hearing from you. They care about the constituents and they care about stories. If they have a story about um, the importance uh, about your inability to reach uh, their, their your voting website. They're going to they they want to hear about that. They want to know that. Um, uh, that's my daughter. Hi, Caroline. They want to they want to know that uh, you are having trouble and and here's why. And you're a voter. So please make sure you're sending personal stories back to them. You know, we take our script, modify it, add your own personal touch to it. It will make a big impact that way. And um, I, this we hear from uh, legislators all the time who want to hear about stories from their constituents and I just just want to say please do it um, there's some I know um, I'm looking at the chat box and people are having trouble phone calling it's partially because uh, with COVID, COVID there's not that much staff um, or they're overwhelmed so if you can't get in touch with your governor by by phone then uh, definitely get in touch with your governor through a um, uh, you know, through the comment, your uh, box is on every single governor's website. There's going to be a little comment box where you uh, add your name, you add your voting address back in the United States, and then you add your comment. And again, the personal touch, the personal story is really important part of that. Let them know that you're a real person that you care. And with that, we'll get to the example. Great. Thank you. Um, I just want to, um, before we start, I just want to explain a little bit about the Letter of Concern campaign, um, because this is one of the focus, focus of, um, this is a focus of the actions. Um, the Letter of Concern campaign is where we ask our members, um, hang on, um, Edie, can you just go to the next slide as well, please? The next slide, which is slide 14. Is it this one, take a stand for email ballot returns, or the one after it? Um, the one that says take a stand for email ballot returns. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, okay. So the letter of concern campaign um, is where we ask for our members in democratically run states um, who require postal mail ballots to return um, to call or email their governors to voice their concerns and then critically to record their responses via our feedback form. This is feeding into our wider work that we're doing with, directly with state governors 
um, we have two volunteers who are really helping to not only promote and push the campaign, but also to record and monitor responses to build up strong data for our case. Um, and that's Edie, who's there monitoring the call, and Mary, who's on as well. And I want to thank them so much because they've been doing a ton helping with this and in a myriad of other ways. Um, and so it, that's been really excellent. Um, and again, we really want more people to be doing um, a lot of concerned campaigns. And we recently did a call to leaders and country committees to help in this and to host their own events. So if you go to um, this slide that we're look, currently looking at next, now and the next one, Edie, if you can go to the next one, yeah, then um, this will really take you through everything that you need to do to host your own event. Um, so I really want to encourage you to, to, um, to go ahead and it's fun to do it with it in a group and more effective. Um, so when we go to the, let's go to the actions, um, can you go to slide, um, let's see, if you go to slide 12, and it says today's voter protection actions at the top. Right, so for today's actions, um, um, all participants are encouraged to make calls for this. Um, only the voters in the states that are listed here on the right are the ones that we want to fill out the form because we, we want our data to be very much geared towards democratic um, governors. So everyone can make a call. Um, Laura is going to model it for us and we'll mute our microphones and make our own, take our own actions and it should take about five minutes and we share our feedback either in the chat box or for the people who are doing a lot of concern campaign they can use this feedback form and I'm going to include a link just now in the chat, chat box in a second um, which will give all of these instructions and include links um, uh, links for that. Um, so um, all voters in all of these states on the right, it includes everyone who, can do, who needs to do post on their ballot and people who can do fax but maybe don't find it as easy to do, call your governors, that would be fantastic. Um, and then everyone else who's on this call today and if you don't vote in those states, please make a call to protect the postal service. Um, that is, is absolutely key. Um, and so after that, we are going to do some actions um, and um, we're going to do some tweets and we'll go through that afterwards, but let's make our calls first. And Laura is going to model the call for us. So I'm go to the next before we go to that slide i just want to i just want to make make sure that everybody on the call understands that if you're a voting in one of those states that's listed above a number one if that's one of your voting states including california louisiana and rhode island because those are facts only then you definitely want to call your governor but if you are lucky enough to be in a state that allows for electronic um ballot return method, whether it's, um, you know, hopefully email or, or uh, web portal, then do call your senators um, because we don't want to be calling. Yeah. Anyway, just to make sure that it's clear. So um, uh, sure. Can we go to the actual uh, page with the script on it? Yeah, I'm just pasting, um, I'm pasting in the chat box, um, a PDF that will have all the instructions, the same information that we've just read now. Um, Great. Okay. So, um, as I said earlier in the call, I am a Minnesota voter, so I'll be calling Governor Walz. Now, when I tried to call yesterday, um, a lot of governor's offices are quite overwhelmed and um, don't be discouraged. You can just do a quick Google search to find your governor's uh, phone number. Don't be discouraged if you can't get through. You can always communicate with them uh, by email, by tweet, as Maya will go through that later. But I'll, I'll try to call up and ho hopefully I'll get a live person, but um, I'm trying to call him right now. And let's see. Can you hear that? Yeah. Hello. 
Thank you for contacting the Office of Governor Tim Wall and Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan. Our office is located at 130 State Capitol at 75 Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in St. Paul, Minnesota, 55155. Our office is open Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Please leave your message along with your name and phone number. Thank you for your call and have a great day. Hi, my name is Laura Mosedale. I'm a constituent of Governor Walls residing in London in the United Kingdom. I'm calling Governor Walls to express my concerns about the fact that Minnesota does not offer ballot returns via email attachment or web portal for Americans voting from overseas. There are currently 29 states that do offer email, web portal, and or fax ballot returns, but unfortunately Minnesota, which is otherwise a very voting friendly state, is not one of them. This is really important to me because I know that mail times have really been um, impacted both within the United Kingdom and also within the United States. And I don't really have confidence about my ballot arriving in time. Um, in addition, about 80 countries around the world do not have any postal service to the US and many of the other countries are delivering postal mail to the US via boat. Courier service may be the only and very exposed, expensive option at the moment for millions of voters applying a very high poll tax on voters from abroad. If Governor Walls allowed ballot returns via email attachment or web portal for citizens overseas, this they would resolve, he would resolve the problem immediately. Will you make sure that the voices of American citizens living abroad are heard in the upcoming election by working to implement email or web portal portal ballot returns in the state of Minnesota. Many thanks for all that you do. Again, my name is Laura Mosedale and my email is lpmosedale at me.com and my local phone number right now is 210-210-3561. Thank you very much. So that's it. Um, it's, it's very easy to do, and I hope we can uh, go now and start taking the actions. Is that right, Maya? Yeah, so does everybody, is it clear to everyone what they're doing? And I've actually left a link. I've put a link in the chat box for, for those people doing the Letter of Concern campaign to record the responses. Um, so you might want to take note of that. But does everyone feel sure about what they're, what they're doing? If not, let us know. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I think we can all mute our microphones and then make our own calls. Great. And Maya, can we just uh, just to make it really easy and have it at the bottom of the the chat? Can we put those links once more for um like people who are calling the USPS, etc.? Would that be possible? Sorry, we're calling. Sorry, what do you want? Oh, oh, the links for the campaigns, just so everybody has the scripts oh. right there. Yeah. So the script, so the link that I've just put in action instructions, this is a PDF and it has um, all the instructions and the links to contact your governor as well. So I'll repost that. Perfect, that's great. All right, let's dive in. I'm gonna um, call the USPS.
Hi Maya, how did it go? Yeah, so I made a call about the postal service, spoke to a really nice staffer who oh. um, took my email. Oh, my fantastic. Email so, I just, I, I left a message for my senator. That was, uh, it was yeah. good. So um, should we do some questions now and then yeah. get back to our next action? Oh, super. So let's see. Edie, would you like to uh, read up, out some questions from the Q&A? Yeah, just let me open it. Let me give one second. Um, hold on. All right. So there's a question about um, faxing the primary ballot. Um, uh, Betty Janssen, sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing it right, asks, can you tell us, uh, can you tell her where and how to do that, how to fax the primary ballot and also how to follow up to make sure they got it? That is a great question. And one thing I should, I can recommend is that you use an email to fax solution. And the great thing, news is that the Department of, of Defense um, has have a great email to fax solution that you can use in order to um, fax your ballot back. And I'm going to pop the link to that website where you can find more information into the chat box. One thing I just want to uh, make sure, um, because faxes can be a little bit tricky, make sure that you're, uh, as much as possible, printing your ballot um, on, as an eight and a half by 11 um, uh, document, if possible, because that's going to fit in the fax machines that um, the ballot will, will show up in the fax machines. So resize your paper uh, to eight and a half by 11 and then um, make your ballot the, the correct size. It's a little tip for faxing. And here is the, the website. It's gonna talk about the really important cover letter, um, the cover sheet that has to be included in order for them to get your ballot where it needs to go. Um, well, the DOD email to fax solution is fantastic up and through November 2nd. I would not use it on November 3rd. Um, when I was just talking to FEAP last week and they said, if you try to fax your ballot back on November 3rd, it's like a gamble because we will be overwhelmed with uh, faxes on that date. So if you want your fax, your ballot to count, please get your ballot in way before the deadline. That's, so with that primary, you should be really fine. Excellent. Another question is from Tia McSherry asking, is it ever possible to return ballots from the U.S. Embassy or consulate? Yes, it depends where you are. Every, um, what we're finding this year is some consulates are not returning ballots by fax, but you can go to um, every uh, embassy has a, a, a citizen's assistance page. And it really depends on, uh, again, where you are, but you can go to the citizen, U.S. citizens assistance page and find out their number. You can call them about it. They'll often have the information on the page. And um, if you are signed up for the uh, award for the emails, uh, the mascot emails, you should also hear from them that way. But it's definitely a possibility. And the thing to keep in mind, slow postal delivery through the diplomatic pouch, because those diplomatic pouches are not going straight from Prague, for example. Our pouch goes to Prague and then it wanders around Europe a little bit, sightseeing, and then it finally goes to Dallas where it's distributed. And uh, it's a very slow delivery as well. All right, another question is about international mail. Uh, Joya Lewis uh, says that they vote in Portugal and is waiting a response, but has not gotten a ballot yet. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if that's for the primary or if, if it's for the uh, presidential election, they wouldn't have been sent out yet, but maybe you could talk about um, getting ballots through, uh, making sure you request to receive your ballot by email and not by postal mail. Well, Edie just made the right answer. Uh, when you are requesting your ballot this year, you're going to be filling out vote from abroad that that form on vote from abroad and there's going to be a question that says how do you want to receive your ballot make sure 100 percent that you ask for it to be sent to you by email not postal mail because you, uh, you'll be probably getting your ballot in november if you wait if you say postal mail so please indicate you want it by email uh there's a question from david schallenberger about uh the possibility of DA lobbying with DHL and UPS for reduced rates for ballot returns. Do you know of any possibility of that? Um, we have, uh, um, we're, we've asked FedEx uh, and it's, it's usually decided on a regional basis. They did this in 2008 and 2012. They have not um, reached out or, or said yes yet, but we are, we have reached to them and we're asking them, but so far I would, um, I would not bet on it, but, but you know, 
if you, anyone here knows the CEO of FedEx, please reach out to them and say, this is important. We'd really appreciate that. Or even regional. That's, regional is great too. Uh, here's an interesting question from Evelyn Riera, who asks, what about the issue of waiving your right to secret ballot when using email or an online portal? Aren't you worried about abuse? Local election offices and vote, uh, people who are counting ballots, um, they tend to be, you know, I, I think that this is something that they are going to be seeing thousands and thousands and thousands of ballots, and uh, they're not going to remember who voted how. Having uh, tallied thousands and thousands and thousands of ballots for our primaries, I can I can kind of pretty much guarantee that. But um, secret ballots, you know, um, I think this is a year where we have to say, I'm proud of how I'm voting, and this is, and um, I'm going to make a stand and and say I'm going to be voting for democracy and not for authoritarianism and fascism. And can I just add something to that? Please. Um, I mean, the thing is, I. I mean, I vote in a state where I can send by email attachment, which means that it's not a secret ballot. Um, anything that I, if I drill down anything that I think that I might be worried about, um, and this goes for people who say, oh, but you know, this, you know, is it open to hacking or it's not online voting? Um, it's an email attachment. So it's the same as if any attachment that you send ordinarily an, an attachment can't be hacked. Um, but also, um, you know, if you think that it's oh, someone's going to start chucking out the democratic votes, well, you follow it through to see that your vote is counted. So um, that, you know, if someone um, reads through and says, okay, that's a Democrat, I mean, what, what, what are they going to do about it? I mean, the main thing is if we're pursuing our votes and making sure that they are counted, then that's, um, then you know, I think they'll have, so, as Julie was saying, they'll have so much other, <laughs> so many other things to do that they won't be looking for that. But I don't think there's a, a real risk or a danger. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. That's really good points. Um, I also had a few people asking about, uh, or telling about their issues trying to contact their governor. Um, they got a cannot reach this page message or otherwise it was blocked from abroad. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to the people having those types of problems? Well, first of all, I, we need to know um, if, if you could send us information about what country you're calling, you're trying to get um, through from and what state, that's great for, because it's, it's also something we need to flag with that state party or and with that state. Um, but go ahead, Laura, you had another suggestion too. I was actually just going to answer because I, and maybe this is because I'm actually in the States now, but I was able to just Google contact Gretchen Whitmer and I got right to a page that says share your opinion. So if you can't get on that, then maybe there is, there is a problem because I, it's, it's, I found it. Maybe I can even um, put it in the chat box. Yep. Uh, where I'm, it looks wondering, like I'm wondering if it might be blocked <laughs> from a certain point. That's, yeah. Let me just see whether I put it in the answer. I'll try to put it in the chat, what I, what I see, and maybe you can um, uh, look for it. That would be, yeah. Oops. I'll do it in just a second anyway. You should Great. carry on. What if, yeah. What's, who's next, Edie? All right. Um, let's see. Another question. Somebody says that they've sent their ballot for state senator through the U.S. Embassy in Amsterdam and received in return a letter from Virginia saying that the ballot arrived empty. Do you have any idea what might have happened there? Well, it sounds as if the envelope uh, came unglued, unfortunately. Um, that's unfortunate. What usually happens with these with uh, ballots is it, um, you, it will travel in the, in the pouch to Dulles where it is distributed into the postal mail system. But there's always gonna be issues with uh, postal mail there, you know, um, letters are not uh, babied with, they are, they are tossed around like anything, unfortunately. So everybody, you might wanna consider like making sure the adhesive is really well applied before you send off your ballot. Um, then several people had comments about not knowing whether their state permits a uh, fax return or email return. So I think they can find all that information from votefromabroad.org. 
Absolutely. You just go to votefromabroad.org slash states and then look up your state and it will tell that information right there. All right, another question about contacting governors and other representatives. Is leaving a, vo a message on voicemail more effective than sending an email? Hmm. It's a good question and I think it depends on their staff. Maya, what do you think? I mean, I think um, they all get recorded. They have to take note of your comments and they will have a log book uh, or log book or however they record it, they will. So as so long as you're getting through to someone, if you're emailing, if you're leaving a, a voice message, um, don't be discouraged. Um, you know, it all, it, it's about kind of making your voice heard and, and election, you know, elective officials do really want to hear, they need this information, um, particularly when they're coming up to an election and a lot of them are, re, are running and actually want to be on the good side of their constituents, you know. That's right. And I know some people say do both. It's, I think it's also a good idea. Go ahead, Laura. No, I was going to say that I do think it is. It's, it's much more, we all know how easy it is to um, kind of ignore emails because we get so many all the time and relatively few people actually bother to call their elected officials. So I, 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 I do feel like it sometimes has more impact. And just having a little give and take, since I was able to speak to somebody from Governor Walsh's office yesterday, it was really great to talk to him because he um, he had no idea, he'd never thought about uh, overseas voters and the challenges for Minnesota overseas voters before. So I just feel like that since we had an interaction, um, it sounded like he was really um, you know curious and interested, but we all get so many emails. So I just, I'm really in favor of live calls as yep. well as emails and other forms. Of, but I uh, think- I think if you leave a message, then email as a follow-up, I think that's, then you know yes. that someone's getting that final end, that, end, that message. But it's both, it's great. Yeah. So Edie, do we have any other questions? Yeah, there's a few more. So one from Hank Turner. If the sites get blocked for overseas, would a VPN help? Yes, it does. Um, and uh, if, if you can download Opera, Opera has a built-in uh, VPN in their browser. It's one useful, tip and trick. Yeah, I've used Opera as well and it's worked for me. Uh, the Pennsylvania sites are usually not available, but through Opera, I'm able to access them. Absolutely. And uh, this is not a pitch for Opera, but it just works and it's free. So that's why we're saying it. Look, you can also look for other browsers that might have this uh, system, that option too. Um, there's also another question from Joya Lewis about international mail. So if there isn't inter inter international mail from the country you're in due to COVID, when the ballots get sent out, what would you recommend? Um, well, the things that you can do are uh, embassy. And then you can, you know, I was talking to FEAPA about this and they said, call up your local election office and just appeal to them and say, this is the challenge I'm faced with and see what and it, they might accept it by email. But it, it is going to be an issue. We know it's going to be an issue. And then um, there's also um, uh, courier service. And one other thing, which we are going to get, to, we were um, planning on talking about later in, um, in the agenda, is your ballot insurance policy, which is the federal write-in absentee ballot. And um, the federal write-in absentee, absentee ballot is something you can actually do now to make sure your ballot is counted. You can go, we'll put a link in the chat box, feap.gov slash fmob. And you just go there, you fill in your information and uh, you go to Ballotpedia, you look up who's gonna be on your ballot, and you fill in the information really clearly and then you postal mail it back following all the instructions. It's your insurance policy. We really recommend if you have concerns about this now, go ahead and do it. If your primary is not over, there are a lot of primaries that are um, at the early part of August. You can wait until the primary is over, I know, Many of them are wrapping up on the 11th. Um, you, can, you can wait until then if you want to wait, or you can also just say US representative Democrat, and that counts too. There's great instructions on the, on the link um, if anyone wants to put that in the chat box. So again, that's feap.gov slash fwab. And can I just say something else on to that point? I mean, this is going back to what we were saying about have a plan and think ahead. Um, hopefully the Postal Service might be resumed in your country, but if not, um, 
the, you know, and this also speaks to what Midge was saying about voter suppression, is that you can't let yourself be deterred from voting because of these difficulties. Because ultimately, and I, and I take some inspiration from, from uh, folks in the States who basically have every single voter suppression tactic thrown at them and they still come out and turn out the vote. And it's because they are just determined and they will go through it. Um, you know, if worst case scenario, you have to use a career service, it is a, you know, it, I mean, it's, you know, you're, you're paying for it. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. And it's not right, but it's so important to vote. And if it's going to cost you 50 euros or however much it actually costs, um, start budgeting now, just as your back, as your backup, really. And then as Julia was saying, the F world form, um, you know, and appealing to your, to your elected officials because they are disenfranchising you and maybe they don't even know about it. It's not to say that they're going to change, but they need to know that you're not able to cast your ballot because there's no postal service. Yep. And again, uh, one thing to note about your FWAB, it still requires, being, if, you, if your state requires your ballot be postal mailed, your state requires your FWAB be postal mailed, but at least it gives your, your ballot a few more months to make its meandering way there. Um, another question about requesting an absentee val ballot. Um, if you haven't, if you've requested your absentee ballot and haven't gotten a response yet, how can you be sure that you'll receive? Oh, so uh, Edie, you froze, but I think you said, how can you be sure that you received it? You, in, yes. uh, if you go to um, your state page on votefromabroad.org, that's votefromabroad.org slash states, and then look up your state, there's going to be a link at the bottom of your state information where you can look up your status. And everyone should do that. Even, um, you know, it just really is useful to make sure you're all good to go. You can also email your local election office. Do it now before they get really swamped. Mm -hmm. um, another person asking, uh, this was Anelika Andraji, uh, who's from California, and uh, was told that fax is already an option for California and um, they wanted to explain that fax isn't as convenient and it can be confusing. So do you have any other talking points for why fax is not as good as email? Well, um, yes. Uh, one thing with fax is that on fax machines, fax machines have very specific formatting. And so if your ballot is uh, has been printed on an A4 page and it's longer then the eight and a half by 11 page, it's gonna be cut off at the bottom. And so, uh, you know, this can be really problematic, you know, for states. I know it's it's a, a frequently asked question actually about, uh, and why we say, please make sure you're, you print it out as an eight and a half and, uh, eight by 11 and fit it to, to your paper so that when it's going through the fax, the email to fax, it's gonna fit on their fax machine back, back at home. And Julia, do we know, um, I mean, so like if I send, if I uh, send my ballot by email attachment, I know it's going to an actual person who has to be accountable and I can follow that up with her. If you're sending your ballot by fax, it's just going into an office. There's like no one person who you follow up, like did it arrive? Exactly. I and also there's the cover letter that you have to do. Oh, I know. I mean, as a California voter, the good thing is they use fax server. So it's a, it's a less um, old fashioned technology. You know, in Florida and Louisiana and Rhode Island, you actually, I mean, Louisiana and Rhode Island, you actually sometimes have to call up the, the office and say, can you please turn that fax machine on? You know, <laughs> and that is not something you, voters should have to do, to do really. The Flor Florida also has problems with uh, fax ballot service, which is why we've asked the uh, Democratic Party there to be fax watchers. And, you know, they understand that problem as well. All right, um, let's see. One question about Democrats Abroad from Steve Miller. Are there statistics on how many members come from each state? Um, well, it's interesting to see uh, where the biggest states are. You know, um, uh, Florida has the biggest number of ballot returns of any uh, state from around the world. And um, I think it's Florida, then California, then Washington. Many, many ballot returns. Biggest county is LA County in California. Biggest congressional district is Manhattan. But it doesn't really matter how many, how big it is. We still make an impact. We make an impact in small states like New Hampshire, where we won 
Senator Maggie Hassan's race in 2016 in medium-sized states, where we won Governor Roy Cooper's uh, election in 2016, and then in big states, where we won Mag uh, Nikki Freed's election in 2018. So it doesn't matter um, the, si the numbers of Americans abroad. It, all that matters is that you're getting your, your votes in. You know, Susan Rice, on a call we had with her earlier this week, said there's we have no vote to spare, and that means your ballot too. So um, please try to make be part of that margin of victory. And one more question um, from Evelyn Riera about targeting counties that didn't send out ballots for the primaries to make sure they sent out uh, send out ballots on time. Uh, specifically, she's talking about Fulton County, Georgia. Mm. Yes. Now, one thing to be we. The good thing about uh, the general election is that there's one date for us to all be watching for, and that's September 19th. That's B day, ballot day. That's the 45 day uh, point where ahead of the general election where local election offices should send their ballots out. So on B day, if you haven't gotten your ballot back, you know that you're, there's something wrong and you need to get in touch with your local election office and find out what it is. So it's, it's much easier, you know, primaries, there's a lot of them and uh, it's hard to keep track of that, but um, it, if you don't get your ballot back uh, on September 19th, please get in touch immediately. We, that's probably a lot of uh, Georgia voters who are also impacted, and we need to get on the phone with the ACLU, Fair Fight, et cetera, and make sure things are happening. All right, and then uh, the last thing I have is a plug from Elizabeth Kelly about the Sunday Global Voter Registration Support Call. There's going to be live support all day long, uh, so join on. you can join on August 2nd or any Sunday until November from midnight to midnight Eastern time to talk to a volunteer live on Zoom about any questions about voting from abroad. And I believe uh, the text is now in the chat box for the Zoom link to that. Great, and it's also on the front page of the website. In case you lose that link, just go to the front page, look for the cute graphic. And uh, we have a wonderful team of people. You get your own person who'll take you to a breakout room and walk you through your problems. So they're wonderful. I totally recommend it. And I just, uh, there were two more questions that I just spotted. Um, one person says, uh, asks, is the script in the email the same as the one for the online form? I can only use a thousand, um, a thousand characters and is this, and the script is longer than that, um, the text, and do I need to personalize it? And, and yes, these are guides. So the scripts are guides and we would like you to personalize it because I think, your constituents want to hear your own personal story. So if the more you can put your own circumstances into the script, the better, but personalize it. If it doesn't fit, um, then yeah, then you need to do it. So the script is interchangeable. For a telephone call, it maybe is a bit longer. For an email, you might need to modify it. Um, and yes, and then, and then finally, there's another question. Um, this person says, um, I just wanna make sure that Facebook posts about voting that that Maya just mentioned is coordinated with the social media messages, what they're doing for Vote From Abroad. Um, and basically there's being coordinated through DACOM, so they'll be coordinating it. So, yeah. Great questions. Yeah. All right, so um, do you want to, from here, Maya, do we, do you want to do the, the, the social, yeah, I mean, finally, before we end, this is really for anybody who is on social. Our social, uh, our Facebook post um, is going to be pinged around and it's going to be on this live document, which is going to be on the wiki. And so I encourage you to come back to it and find um, posts and, and tweets and things that you can use to amplify your message. But for now, right now, if, um, Edie, if you go to, um, Slide 18, it's the final, if anyone is using Twitter and wants to send a message. Um, so there's the retweet this post, I'm going, to, I'm going to put this link in the chat box. We're retweeting, this is the DA post. And that's the DA post about our voter protection issues. And then we've got a couple of samples and I'm gonna use one that you can personalize. And so you retweet this, the DA tweet with a comment. And this um, post is for a Pennsylvania voter as it happens, this tweet, rather. 
So that's the tweet. So if you go to the DA tweet that I've just posted in the chat box, open that up, retweet with a comment, and then paste this text into it. Um, and just, um, just an additional way to kind of help amplify the messages out there in the Twitterverse. Right? And so um, we've got a couple of, in fact, I'll put some other examples and anyone can do this now. Okay, here's another tweet. And I wanna thank Mary for coming up with a lot of these and she is the Pennsylvania voter that looked like that. Okay. Okay, and on this page, you can see the, your state governor handles, which you can get from there. Um, and this is a picture of the tweet that you would be retweeting, the DA tweet, if you want to know. Okay. Okay. I think that's, that's it. I mean, we don't have to all meet while people do that, but it's up to you if you want to do that copy out of the chat box and you can do it offline. Super. That's a, and then, you know, again, if you don't have that much time to volunteer, sharing um, on your social messages like this are really, really valuable. We really appreciate it. Yep, Laura, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. And it's related to something in the question box of Abby Schwartz. Um, there was, she, she had noted that on feap.gov, um, Iowa voters are allowed to return their voted ballots by um, electronically, but I believe that um, only applies to members of the service members, members of the military. I was just looking on the website because vote from abroad, which is generally not used by, um, uh, by military members, it, it says ballot return by postal mail and feap.gov says that you can use email or fax if you are in the service. Sometimes there's differences between that, but that's, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's worth um, highlighting and vote from abroad as well. That's right. Yeah, did you know that, um, Julia? Is that about Iowa? I believe that uh, Heidi just updated that information um, to indicate to, uh, more thoroughly that it w was just, that civilians must have totally posted mail. It's Let me just to mail. Unless you're in the service. I yeah, mean, exactly. Sometimes at the end. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Thanks a lot. Julia, I have a question. Um, so in the chat box, so Kathy Rothschild said, we found a private courier service in Costa Rica who will do it for no charge at all. So that's amazing. And do we have any, because I know that's something that we were looking into, which um, we're trying to work out, like, were there courier companies that were better than others or ones that were willing to play their charges, their fees or anything like that? I think what it has, it, I mean, again, even with FedEx, which is a global company, in the, in the past, it had, everything had to be organized regionally. And so, um, you know, I think um, it's, it's really fantastic that Costa Rica has said yes. And I think um, from a country level, we will be we would love to be reaching out to our local folk and seeing it, what the possibilities are. But uh, by the way, Laura, I have an answer. I looked, um, just double checked on FEAP's website and, and this uh, information about email, in fact, only for overseas uh, members and all um, in a Yukawa voters who are located in a hostile fire area, they, uh, that, that's on their website. So I can confirm what you were thinking that you have to postal mail back to Iowa. Yeah. And that's straight from FEAP. Right. That's super. So if you're in Costa Rica, go to Starbucks, not the <laughs> coffee company. Excellent. That's really super news. Okay. Right. So are there any more questions? Okay. So um, let me just get in. Uh, are we going to have a um, time for for uh, country leaders at the end of the call? Absolutely. If anybody has specific questions or anything that they want to share or concerns, um, yeah, feel free to stay on. We'd love to talk. All right, but for everybody else, thank you so much for joining. Oh, and where's what what link should everybody use if they want to volunteer? 
What would you recommend? Uh, I think they should email us our voter protection email okay. address. So I'm going to just pop that into the yeah. chat box. Voter protection at, let me spell it right. And put volunteer in the subject. Thanks, everybody. It was great to, to uh, see you there and hear your questions. Great quest questions. Great. Thank you so much. OK. Bye, everybody. Ciao. And again, leaders, uh, country leaders, please feel free to stay on. We'd love to answer any questions you all might have. Questions, concerns, ideas, et cetera. I really like these uh, tweets. I'm going to have to go and, and uh, work one out myself. Yeah. I'm more of a Facebook user, but Twitter is always fun too. I keep trying to get off of Facebook, but I just <laughs> it's very hard if you rely on it for certain things. That's um, right. And we get a lot of traffic on Facebook. It's totally, it's still useful. Yeah. You got to fight evil with, uh, by being on the channel that, ev that everyone's talking on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just use it till November 4th. <laughs> Good point, Laura. Oh my goodness. I think November 17th, really. We're gonna, it's going to be a long uh, election night. It's going to the election night that lasts for two weeks. Oh my God. All right. So it looks like we have some leaders still on the call. You guys want to put your, um, your, your, hand, your questions in the Q&A? We can go through them. Oh, Joellen says, is there a link to the Facebook post? Not yet, not yet, but it will be. And actually I will, what I can do is I will send it out to everyone with the recording and the presentation slides. Great. Yeah. Anybody else have some questions? This is your time. Anybody have some uh, ideas, uh, commentary? <laughs> uh, I wonder if Abby is still on the call. Abby Schwartz, is she still on the call? I don't think so. Okay. Um, so we can follow up with her. All right. Mm -hmm. well, it looks like we have a bunch of um, Leaders who are uh, interested, but maybe don't have their own specific questions. Okay. I have a question, Julia, um, if you know anything about this. So I was thinking, I don't know how many students, US students are gonna be studying abroad in the fall, but is there any plan to reach out to like study abroad coordinators to make sure that those students know how to vote from abroad? Laura is the person for that. Go ahead, Laura. Cool. Yeah, so um, actually my co-chair, Linda Addison, is head of uh, uh, global study abroad, and study abroad is almost non-existent this fall because of COVID. So most of the one semester or year-long programs have been um, suspended. They're just not happening. So um, we are still, we still have student leaders at some of the UK universities that have full degree students, and a lot of them either already based, um, they're American students, and they're either based in Europe or they're planning to go back. Um, we're in touch with them. We're, we're staying in touch to see what they're going to be doing in the fall. And there is a, a group of them who are working on sending out messages via their universities to all their um, U.S. citizen students if they do happen to be outside the country, if they are returning to live in St. Andrews or Edinburgh or wherever. Um, but it's, it's, it's nothing compared to what it normally yeah. is. Uh, we definitely are thinking about it, though. We did a huge, huge push in 2018 to really reach out, um, expand our, our drives at those places. But this year it's a lot less. But thank you for asking because it's so, students really need help. Mm -hmm. That's know. right. Uh, there was a great article, um, I, I don't know, maybe in the New York Times about how um, uh, youth, the youth vote had the hardest trouble voting with vote by mail and that, you know, just making sure, you know, going step by step through the process made a huge difference for people. And that's, I think we just need to be prepared 
you know, um, we are used to vote by mail, but not everyone is, and we just need to make sure we're doing a step-by-step -step, um, process ex explanation. So Maya, here's a great question from Will. He says, from the point, Will Bacher. Hi, Will. So he says, from the point of view of CCs, their role in voter protection is to drive mass advocacy and refer problems to voter protection at democratsabroad.org for personal follow-up. Is that true? Yes. I mean, it's to share as much as possible the, the our key messages for voters' information tiles so that everyone's super um, kind of aware of what they should personally be doing to prep. And so encouraging that. Um, we would love to have um, country committee leaders helping on the two campaigns that I mentioned, which is um, the um, checking uh, the state lists mm -hmm. and the also the uh, letter of concern campaign, because that's really where you can build up big numbers. The state lists, you need people from different countries. So those would be two really useful things. Um, letting their members know they can volunteer, um, sharing our information as much as possible. Um, they can go to the wiki, wiki when this is up and um, download it for themselves and see how they can employ some of those actions and different things in their own country community memberships. Um, but really, it's if anybody is having concerns, please do email and contact us straight away so that we can help problem solve. And also, it's not just problem solving for that person. Sometimes it's alerting to a bigger issue that needs to be explored. We want to explore it now before the presidential. Lots of issues are coming up in the primaries and it's like a real test um, test run for, for what could be happening in the presidential. So really that's, important. That's a really good point. And also, if it feels funny, report it. You know, we often, uh, as abroad voters, we're so used to, uh, you know, the challenges of living abroad, we are like, okay, it just, there's, you know, I just have to get through it. But it, don't blame yourself. Say, okay, this is odd. I don't know why I can't access this website. I don't know why I can't get this ballot. I don't know why my ballot's late. Don't blame yourself. Always go and, and get in touch with us because um, we need that information and uh, you are doing a service not only for your own ballot, but for everyone else in your state. So important. Uh, Laura's leaving. So Laura, thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. Fantastic. And Will, now Will has a follow-up question. He says, any projects before November that CCs might be asked to participate in? Well, Maya's already talked about two of them. Is there anything else coming up that we should expect? Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there are other projects coming up. Let's have a look, but I didn't actually, I mean, Edie, do you want to share screen? And um, we can talk about some of the projects that are coming up on, uh, we go to slide five. Um, I mean, I didn't cover all of this information because it would have just taken all, all day. Um, Was it this so, slide, Maya? Am I on the right one? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So we've talked about review state lists because that's been uh, already launched. Um, we have researching top, in, the, in the top 20 countries. We need um, data on how many Americans live in those states that will really help us in any advocacy work that we're doing and Julia reaching out to uh, voter protection teams to say, um, you know, there are this many, however many it is, um, Americans living in this country and they're being disenfranchised by the, you know, um, by these actions. So it's kind of building up a picture so that um, states know that how many voters abroad live here, because we quite often say, oh, there's five million, there's six million, and then potentially of that, how many people have, you know, you want kind of granular figures um, um, to work with. Um, issue documentation, working with the online Zoom, Zoom room, which I think Julia already talked about, but that is a, a huge thing that people could be involved in. Um, if we go to the next slide. Also, voter help desk. And voter help desk. Very, help. Uh, Heidi always needs more people helping. Uh, you know, the closer we get, we're going to be getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions. Um, and the great thing about the voter help desk is the answers are uh, we have a lot of saved answers, so you don't have to be an expert because the voter help desk is, and you uh, anything that you can't answer from the saved answers, you just uh, provide it over to one of our voting gurus who can who can handle it. Absolutely, yeah. 
absolutely. And the purge list reviews and the rejected primary uh, views, reviews. Um, so we've talked about that. I mean, we're already, you know, the primaries aren't completely over, but we're already, you know, we've got people who, you know, have been purged, who have had their ballots rejected. And so this is a whole thing that we actually need volunteers to help with. And we'll have to be calling people and making sure they know now that the ballots have been rejected um, or they've been purged so that they can do something about it for the presidential. Um, so that's a big thing. Um, if we go to the next um, slide, Edie, um, so we've talked about the voter protection, the letter of concern campaign, activism, we've talked about as much as we can, you know, build up kind of a big noise of, you know, citizens living abroad as possible to say, you know, our votes count and we deserve to have our votes um, to be able, you know, voting rights. Um, um, looked after writers and editors we always have little things that we need you know someone who's available oh can you write this letter can you do so i mean anything like that is super useful phone banking laura talked about that quite a lot but we are partnering with get out the vote teams to um bring in really strong voter protection language into the call scripts and running specific campaigns possibly with the FWOB, you know, it, it's to be a coordinated thing if we form, so we need to um, get that information out there um, in a timely fashion. Um, yeah, and then, and then finally the next slide, please, Edie. Edie. Um, Post-election efforts. Mm. Um, there's a lot that still needs to happen even after an election. And I think, you know, we don't know, but I think this is going to be a really crazy and possibly contested election um, and if we can you know a if we can vote get our votes in super fast so that there's not this like long drawn out protracted vote count thing then that's going to be easier for everybody and um, Trump won't be calling it rigged that well he will but anyway he will be calling it but anyway just it's just um, helps in that um, but curing people's Ballots. That's something I hadn't even heard of. Um, Julie, do you want to talk about what curing ba ballots is? I mean, that's usually if there's a signature <laughs> mismatch or something. Right. So Florida often has that. In fact, they um, they just were writing to all of their voters about curing the ballots for the primaries, and it was like at the very top of the first paragraph. I was like, oh, they're this is a serious issue for Florida. So um, if people ha if they have problems with um, your signature, they won't count it. So you, you need to, you'll need to get in touch as a Florida voter with uh, your local election office make sure, and go through the steps that they're gonna ask you to go through in order to cure your signature. It's called curing your ballot. And uh, um, it's, it's a voter suppression tactic, of course, because it means you have to you know, do lots of extra work, unfortunately. But it's something we dealt with in 2018 and we did a lot of phone banking to our, phone, our Florida voters um, after the election and then we expect that we're gonna to have to do that in, in uh, this year as well. So we're gearing up for it, and especially, especially for Florida. And we have a lot of voters in Florida. And if you think, if you consider what it was like in Georgia after the midterms, when that was a really, that was a contested thing and that drew out for, for quite a long time. Um, and it was kind of calling all the Georgia voters and asking them to check whether their votes had been counted, it was finding, affidavits, finding people who can supply an affidavit for court cases that they were pursuing in Georgia um, in a really coordinated effort. So it was a big thing, you know, I imagine that kind of thing will be going on. Um, and so, yeah, we'll need lots of people to <laughs> help do that. It's a great question. Um, Thank you, Will. And now Ellie Wallace asks another really important question to clarify. She says, can we use services available in our country that carry packages, letters, et cetera, to the U.S. for us, they would then mail them from the United States. Does it, I'm sure we all know why we can't do that. Does um, anyone want to note that? We can't bundle uh, mail, unfortunately, because ballots from abroad need to, uh, for, for almost every state that we know of, they have, there has to be an indication on the ballot that it was sent from abroad in order for it to be counted as, as a UACABA ballot. So, uh, when you when you drop your ballot off with your embassy, they're going to be putting a counselor stamp on it, 
which is going to let the local election office know that it came from abroad. But if you uh, put your ballot in a group with 100 ballots and they're sending it back to a friend in, in Texas to put into the mail stream, there's no indication that that ballot came from abroad. So uh, the local election office does not have to count it. So it's really, it's a good thing to know. It's really important. It's a, it's a tiny detail, but it makes a big difference. And thank you, Ellie, for asking that question. Um, let's see. And Dahlia, Dahlia asked about uh, making sure she's registered. So Dahlia, if you go to votefromabroad.org slash states slash NY, you can there's, go down to the bottom of the page and there's gonna be a place where you can check your registration and definitely please ping Governor Cuomo. He's a great man. We really appreciate what he's done with COVID, but my goodness, he needs to let those ballots come through from email, that's for sure. Please ping him about it. Any other questions? Well, super. Well, I don't know. Um, I'm, I just want to say thank you so much to um, our amazing voter protection team led by Maya and with the great help of Mary and Edie. And thank you all three of you for everything you're doing to help protect the vote. This work is incredibly important this, this year. And I also want to thank Midge and Inga for um, being on this call and for you know really adding to it. Mitch, thank you so much for your your history and the issues. That was a very eloquent and inspiring getting us ready for this call. So absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mitch. And with that, Maya, what do you think? Shall so, we do a wrap? Yeah. Um, Katie Sullen just asked the question, as then requires voters to sign the early ballot, domestic postal mail ballot, and to provide the voter's phone mm -hmm. number. It's printed on the envelope that if the signature is questioned, the voter will be called. We have a great Mar Mar Maricopa County recorder. That's wonderful. Great. Yeah, great. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you very much. And um, um, yeah, I think it's a wrap. Go. Thanks for joining. Y'all have a Bye. great rest of your evening. You too. Off to Washington State. <laughs> Bye. Bye.